Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Ice Cream for Everyone podcast. I'm still trying out this new both audio and video format, including the short intro. I mean, I want to keep it really short. I'm, I'm really not sure if I'm going to keep it doing it this way. This is the way I traditionally do it for the audio podcast. So I'm recording for the audio at the same time. And uh, this is also a way to, you know, just give you a couple of minutes, me do my promo, talk a little bit and introduce my guest as well as uh, in this case, the game designer who wrote and designed Happy Together, the game that we play with Marcello. Uh, and also, uh, it's taking me a little while. It's the other reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing it. I'm not sure if there's really added value to it. Uh, if, if you want to tweet or comment about, well, yes, we really like to have a little bit more context, uh, then great. And if not, also understood. Uh it's, I've been using it kind of traditionally because it's done in audio format, but now that I'm doing video as well, I can't figure out if it's really worth it. It's a lot of added time, and it's another way to apologize for the fact that I'm late with this video. Or, I mean, there's been some work, there's been some traveling, there's been a lot of like normal life coming into the way, and the podcast taking the backseat of uh, what's going on. So, apologies for that. Apologies to my guest, Marcello. I had a fantastic conversation really really happy Marcella jumped in and was up for having this conversation and this game together because uh the ice cream for everyone podcast and playful strategy which is what I specialize in is all about where play meets strategy and Marcella was a strategist created a company with a partner called the dojo and uh, I have this text here it's all about full body thinking so they mix physicality I'm reading from the text on the screen physicality mindfulness and creative practice to train deep skills Deep because they apply to everything that we do, but especially at work. And the approach is designed for individuals as well as for teams. Uh, I attended a um, con an online conference during the lockdown months, and it was fantastic. And I, I played the game, and I attended a session that Marcello led, and I thought it was really interesting to think about by mind and body operating together and exercises to make us... Uh, I guess, conscious of the importance of full body thinking, of the importance of body and movement to the mind. And so we talk about that a little bit uh, during the podcast episode. Otherwise, uh, Marcello is originally from Brazil. We chat about that. But he has longstanding experience with a lot of fantastic agencies, both in Brazil as well as in the UK. And he's now based in Northern Italy. And uh, given the interest he has in mindfulness and full body thinking and some spiritual pursuits in well-being, I think, overall, really more than spiritual, perhaps. And I'm interested in that, too. And I had this game that I found out about by French author Gaël Sacré called Happy Together that is available in French as well as in English. And all those links are in the show notes. And we, uh, I, I introduced the game Happy Together in the part of our conversation. And we play a short demo of the game as part of the whole conversation of Happy Together. So you get to find out more about uh, about Marcello, about his history, about his past, what we chat about, about well-being, about full body thinking, about the dojo, and about Happy Together that we play a demo of. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're watching the video or to subscribe to the podcast if you're listening to it. Post a review or a like or a comment or a tweet. You can find me on Twitter or on Instagram at I C villain letters I and C uh, for ice cream and uh, W I L L E M and my main website www.icecreamforeveryone.net. You can find out more about the workshops I organize. You can find out more about my services, whether as a strategist, and uh, just re don't hesitate reaching out to me if you want to find out more. You can also send an email that's at villain W I L L E M at icecreamforeveryone.net net and all the services from Marcello are at the dojo that's at the dojo.team and again all the links are in the show notes he's going to repeat that at the end of the show that's about it for now and uh here's Marcello without further ado enjoy uh, I'll just let a sec a few seconds of silence that allow me to clean any, clean any kind of noise I know there's some construction work across the street I hope it doesn't make any noise but it should be okay Hi, Marcelo. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for making time. Hi, William. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure I pronounced your name correctly, though. I apologize for that. Marcello? Marcello, you... Marcello. It's fine. Just write it with, with one it. L. I keep saying it to people and they still write with two L's. Oh, my um, thing is that people write mine. They always stick an H in my name. But the <laughs> I have the Dutch version of the name and the German yeah. version has an H, but mine doesn't. But they 
yeah. they put it in there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I uh, really, really appreciate. I uh, was attending the group fest think or group the group think fest. Sorry, group think mm-hmm. fest. And you intervened and did a, gave a session uh, of an exercise uh, from the dojo. And mm-hmm. I'm really interested in both personal development and I meditate. And I was mm-hmm. like, great, let's just go along. And this was, I, I know a lot of people during lockdown and the pandemic have been doing physical exercises via video. I yeah. hadn't, but I mm-hmm. had a lot of friends tell me I should, but I hadn't. Uh, so I was <laughs> like, great, let's just do it. And, uh, and it was really interesting and a lot of fun. And I reached thank out you. to you afterwards, one, to thank you for the session. Two, mm-hmm. really interested in what you do. And I also said, hey, I, I do this thing where I invite people to play games, talk about games. And you were like, great, let's do it. I was like, great, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> so uh, do you want to take a couple of minutes and introduce a little, like yourself, who you are and um, what you do? Yeah. 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 So yeah, um, I think as many strategists, I I am a geek. Um, so I like grew up playing video games. I, I, learned, I learned English uh, playing video games. So you grew uh, up in Brazil, whereabouts in Brazil? Uh, Porto Alegre. Um, so it's, that's the north, right? No, the opposite. Oh no, it's, that's the opposite. Yeah. So, okay. It's uh, we border Uruguay and Argentina. I kind of joke that we're, we're more like North Uruguay than Southern Brazil. Okay. Um, so so I yeah. I don't know so, what that means. I'm so sorry. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you have an idea of what gauchos it's purely are, geographically, or is that a cultural reference? No, cultural thing. Okay. So if you know what gauchos are. Uh, yeah. If you have this idea of that's like, like the, the big pampas, the cowboy cowboys. Of the pampas. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's more my cultural identity. Okay. Also I was born ginger and then they took me to the beach and I was like, this doesn't work for me. <laughs> um, so I moved to London when I was 25. Um, I already worked in uh, advertising strategy. I worked a bunch of different places there. Um, when I was turning 30, um, I started dealing with a lot of anxiety. Um, and, and that's when I kind of found meditation, uh, I had tried, uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy a few times and, um, it, it was helpful, but it didn't give me the tools that I needed to really deal with things. And I felt like mindfulness gave me that, uh, on the work front, I, I worked in very good places, but I, I can't say that I've had many good bosses. Um, and and that, was, that was a thing that for me mattered. I was like, when, when I get that opportunity, I'm going to do that better. Did you find uh, that was particularly in your discipline and strategy or overall like across agency leadership or? I think especially, so even like a couple of days ago, I was commenting on Sweathead Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe like Sweathead Facebook group, massive. Yeah, a lot of people listening to this will know about it. But yes, of course. Thanks yeah. for men- so thanks yeah. for mentioning it because you know yeah. not everybody necessarily knows things. Yeah, uh, jo- join it. It's great. Um, so I, I was commenting on like um, what a purpose for a um, strategy uh, strategy department should be, mm. and still people are talking about like oh it's very hard like we do, uh, strategy usually doesn't feel like a team. It's just like people who kind of are under the same umbrella. And that's what I experienced. Like I, I worked with people and I, I didn't know how they would really think, like we'd sit next, next to each other and like, I would overhear maybe what they were like, but there wasn't a concerted effort for us to feel like a team. Hmm. And I felt that, that was, that was uh, something that, that should be done better. When I got the opportunity to, to then be the head of strategy at a, an agency called Forever Beta, um, I, I ran a very uh, geeky team. Uh, and one of the things that um, people started doing was they went rock climbing together. And they're like, Ooh. hey, you should come, you should come. And I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. Oh, pff, how wrong was I? Like, uh, so I was already into fitness, but um, rock climbing for me hit like, there's mindfulness there. There's there's kind of uh, gaming. Like the, the there's levels. There's problems to solve, uh, and it was great because like we would each have our turn trying to solve that problem, and then we get down and then strategize about it. Ah, maybe you should go with your right foot before you move the left hand, you know. And and that discussion was was great, and it really broke up like any kind of hierarchy in my team because it was just like, we just were differently equipped and, you know, we're better at doing certain things than others. And, you know, we just 
try and figure out how you, you could do that the way, because you couldn't do it the way that I did it. But so that was really great. And then um, I left for Vibita. I went down to Sydney and then I met up with Tony again, Tony Clement, uh, who had hired me at Wonderman many years before and is an example of a good boss that I had. And we're talking about um, what helped us. Um, we're talking about the th similar things that Mark Pollard always talks about, um, like how people in strategy suffer with mental health, with feeling lonely and that kind of thing. And we're like, what has helped me? And, um, and we both end, ended up in this uh, same place, which was physical practice. Physical practice has helped us become better people, which then made us better professionals. And that kind of spread through the team. And, and that's where the idea of the dojo um, kind of came about. It took us a little while to figure out what we were going to do with that. And I think now we have um, a good understanding that we're, we're a team coaching company that uses a movement-based approach that we created called full body thinking. And our clients tend to be team leads. So we work with team leads, help them figure out what's the most valuable ver version of their team and who the people in the team need to be to be the most valuable version of themselves and to deliver on that. And that's how we work with clients. Our approach has a mixture of like some of the kind of strategy skills of uh, figuring out what the real problem is and, and helping people understand the purpose of the team and, and value. Um, we run project retrospectives and kind of that kind of thing. There's coaching in there. And then there's also a lot of like the whole team moving together, which obviously we had to kind of reinvent for COVID uh, for the, the virtual world. Uh, but we, we're delivering a project right now and it, it's going well. It definitely, definitely makes a difference for people. That's fantastic. It's really, really great to hear. Uh, I know well, a couple of things that we think of. One, uh, I really enjoyed your session during the, the fest. And one thing that I particularly liked, and it's a detail, but it was meaningful to me, or maybe it's a detail. I don't know if it is one. Uh, but there was one exercise where we were just um, balancing and moving mm -hmm. on one foot. And we mm -hmm. were, had our eyes open, you had us close our eyes, and to realize that I didn't realize how much my sight mattered to my balance. Because mm -hmm. the thing I usually think about is balance is like the inner ear, and I don't mm -hmm. realize how much is based on, and it was particularly interesting for me as a skier, because I'm interested ah. in, and I, I've recently got back into skiing, as, and I've mm -hmm. been relearning it, uh, and really just really learning it as an adult. So uh, looking at ways to improve my balance, that there's a lot of different things I could and should be doing, but it's, it's something that's been interesting for me to look at and to realize. And now I'm, and I haven't done the research or I haven't done any testing on that because of course skiing, like the site is super important. You need to look at where you're skiing. Otherwise you go into a tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering how much practicing with eyes closed on my balance might help. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So that's something that I want to explore in the future yeah. for sure. And, uh, and one thing that you just noted and, 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 um, uh, before and then we'll move on to another topic but uh was you said to it took a little bit of a while to figure it out was that um looking and working out what the product and the service is in terms of defining it one yeah. thing and i'm just wondering if it was the same thing but i even though i spent a career telling businesses like you should focus on one thing and this product and uh when i started doing my own i was like i have no idea how yeah. i could possibly do that yeah yeah same here um uh the way that I, I try to be kind to myself with that is like that's why you hire an external person to help you with that <laughs> and that's why i was valuable up till now in my career that's cool. um but the other thing was that like yeah we we were super excited about this and then when we talk to people like there's there's a few different kind of elevator pitches that we have and one of them is like hey how complex is your job oh super complex i do so many things Right. Should you then always be in this position, sitting kind of hunched over a screen? Like, is that always the best way to position yourself, to position your body, to position your energy to solve all problems that you have? Huh, probably not. I'm like, go. Okay. So you understand that there's a connection between your, your body and your mind. And, you know, you can affect your state of mind by moving around, by, and perhaps by practicing, you'll be able to access different kinds of mind states. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. But still, like that didn't become a business. Yeah. Um, so so when we started going like just naturally, like from our contacts, we we ended up talking to people who are team leads. And usually the brief for us is, hey, I have a team, 
they're great, but I'm fighting against this, um, uh, the kind of the corporate uh, culture that is trying to destroy the creativity uh, or, you know, we're kind of being held to a political standards when we need to be creative or strategic and so on and so forth. Uh, how do I equip people to do the best they can um, and, and survive uh, these kinds of uh, obstacles? So we start working with team leads and then you kind of figure out, right, okay, team coaching is something that makes sense. Um, there's, there's this really what we're truly interested in is, is we want to reshape the world of work to fit humans rather than the other way around. But when, when I think of how to do that, I think trying to, to change people is too small and trying to change corporations is too big. So I find that the team unit is, is the, the kind of the Goldilocks dimension to go for. So if we get teams working uh, in a way that like they, they're having fun, they're being more productive than they ever were, they're delivering more value. And then people start looking, what do, these, what do those guys do that is so good? Like, and, and why can't we get the same results? And it starts being this kind of thing. Then I think we're, you know, we're achieving our, our big mission. Fantastic. Sounds awesome. Cool. All right. So uh, I, I'd forgotten to mention at the beginning my, my tagline because I am also taking a while to figure out exactly what I'm about, what it is I'm selling precisely <laughs> to people and I'm still working on it for sure, particularly mm -hmm. in defining actually like products and to be able to say, hey, look, this is the product I have. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so ice cream for everyone on the podcast side of things and overall is where play meets strategy. And mm -hmm. the podcast in particular is where I share my passion for play particularly role-playing mm -hmm. games, tabletop games. I, and I like board games, tabletop games, and all kinds of play as a behavior overall. But mm -hmm. I do choose a lot, uh, work on a lot of role-playing games. And because they're very audio and storytelling by nature, mm -hmm. uh, I think, one, they have an interest for people working in communication, because tell me a person working in communication not interested in stories and well, humans yeah. altogether. And mm -hmm. two, there's a lot about character and creating a character, putting yourself into somebody else's shoes, which I also think is very interesting for a strategist. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to demo and talk, a, talk and demo a, a game. Um, mm -hmm. So in the world of role-playing games, you have a lot of different stuff. So actually, are you familiar with role-playing games? To yeah. Begin with? Yeah. I okay, did cool. say Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was the dungeon master mostly. You were dungeon master. Great. Perfect. Yeah. So Dungeons mm -hmm. & Dragons, obviously synonymous. The biggest game is like what Kleenex is to tissues. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but once you dig a little bit deeper, there are so many different, there's a long tail of games and ways to play. And mm -hmm. I actually participate in a role playing game podcast in French where we talk about role playing game theory. So right. design theory, discussion theory, and like the amount, like, I mean, you know, this has been going on for six years and we speak two hours a week, every two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I, I feel like I'm usually the, un the less experienced one. And I usually joke around telling them like, I'm just stealing everything you're saying to sell it to corporations. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about something further down the long tail and mm -hmm. a game called Happy Together by a French author, Gaël Sacré. And this mm -hmm. game is apparently what's called a, so it's like, like the same kind of niche is where you go really into very specific niche musics. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're calling it a contemplative role-playing game or free-form storytelling mm -hmm. or maybe both i'm not sure it's maybe contemplative free-form storytelling role-playing game right that's a catchy tagline exactly um mm -hmm. so and he, he very luckily says you could just it's a small little booklet i have it as a pdf i bought it online uh, mm -hmm. and um uh and he says it's very easy there's not much to it like much less to learn than a dungeons and dragons uh, the mm -hmm. way it describes it, it's a role-playing game for two to five players in which you gather to tell a story. And one okay. of you will play a character. And so we, we probably, as I started watching a demo of this, some people played instead it started saying it's a game about contemplation, uh, meditative thoughts, uh, thoughts of being happy in everyday normal life. And you probably turned off most people who were like, I don't, well, there's no, there's no dragons in this. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> And uh, what else did they say about it? So it's about walking your characters through scenes of everyday life. Oh yeah, some of the inspiration are also like movies like Lost in Translation in terms yeah. of ambiance and atmosphere. Or uh, there's a, yeah, there's a whole genre, subgenre of manga and anime that is 
that is like just everyday life of people in Japan, or that can be a touch of Miyazaki movies like My Neighbor Totoro, things like that. Mm-hmm. Think. Mm-hmm. So in, in this, we're supposed to be sharing moments of simple happiness by paying attention to minute details. Each character okay. has also a quest they would like to follow through, a deep longing. They help each other so that they can carry on together for a bit of their path. And we're just, we're just going to demo a little bit and talk about it, and we can tangent mm-hmm. at any time, and I'll just make sure that we have time at the end. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Da, 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 da. I'm going through the text, and this is another thing. I'm, I'm my, part of my experimentation that I'll be interested in getting feedback from you or anybody listening or watching this as well is how interesting is this? Do I need to make sure I edit things like this when I do them in the future, or can I do them like we're doing now as in conversation? Mm-hmm. So to start, we're going to choose together what's called an inspiration. An inspiration is going to be kind of our thread for the game that we've got going. And it could be something simple. It could be an image, an item, a smell, something sensitive, a word, an atmosphere, something that's going to serve as a starting point for the exploration. Uh, And ideally, the author recommends not something that is an existing piece piece of fiction. So, but something that's kind of universal. I don't know, any anything that you're inspired by and something that inspires the both of us or all players yeah that makes us happy so the thing that has made me happy lately is there's a lot of wild chamomile where i live mm. so like i walk around and it the, the just just smells like chamomile tea but like fresh um wow yeah. perfect yeah. that's awesome <laughs> do you live in london by the way no, I live in Treviso. I live in, in northern Italy. Oh, completely not London. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah, why yeah, I thought yeah. you lived in London. Yeah. Oh, I did for 12 years. So oh, that's but, probably um, why. Right. In, okay. September, <laughs> in September, I moved here. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> smell the chamomile. I really do like, all right, perfect. That's a great smell. I think it's, I mean, I do, and I don't know how much it's um, fact versus fiction because there's a whole story, you know, that I grew up with chamomile is the calm, soothing thing that you have in the evening. So yeah. I, I drink it, particularly, yeah. you know, if I've had too much caffeine, if I've had, I have a lot of work on and a lot of different things, and there's a lot going on in my brain, that's usually what I do drink, uh, mm-hmm. or any kind of infusion. So the smell of chamomile, mm-hmm. I'm not sure I know the smell of wild chamomile, but I'll, I'll imagine it. Yeah. Great. This is what we're going to go with our inspiration. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now we're going to choose a destination. Uh, mm-hmm. What the destination is which is a strange way, but the destination is the place where the characters are going to be at the start of the game. Okay, it could be a country, an area, and then a specific place where we're going to be gathered. Mm-hmm. Um, th- so generally speaking, I think this game is meant to be kind of happening more or less in the real world. You can say mm-hmm. that it's slightly alternative, but it's not meant to be completely fantasy either. Mm-hmm. So uh, something, favorite place in our actual world in I time that you'll struggle less with figuring out the details. Okay. Uh, you can agree on slight touches to the sup- of the supernatural if ever you want, but I think for mm-hmm. the purpose of just going faster, let's just stay as the real world. Okay. Um, any idea of where it can be? The, the, does it need to be a place that we both know? Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's go near here. So um, let's go to the Italian uh, mountains here. Oh, that's good. I like it. Yeah. So help me place because I know the name Trevisa. I'm super bad. I'm sorry. This is yeah. this is awesome. I usually I hate those kind of things where people are making fun of lack of knowledge of geography because mm-hmm. I like to think my geography is not that bad. But frankly, right mm-hmm. now Trevisa, I can't place Trevisa. Yeah. Map. But I can We're place Milan 100... and Lake Cuomo, so I think I should be able to place right. Them, so. uh, Venice. Okay. Got it. Got it. 100 kilometers north of Venice. So we're kind of right in between. So about 150 kilometers west of Lake Garda, 100 kilometers north of Venice, and uh, again, like maybe a hundred and little bit kilometers from um, from the beginning of the Dolomites, so Belluno. Right. So yeah. should we be somewhere like a walk in the mountains? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Then, when, then the first part is that we're going to deta- like talk about that a little bit more, so we don't have to go into more yeah. detail just yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, cool. And now we're going to create what he calls vessels, which is usually called characters in other games, as far okay. as I can gather. So again, if ever you watch this, you can tell me. We're, we're, and it could be ourselves, quite simply. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. you can play as an entirely fictional character. 
mm -hmm. uh, if you want. And the only thing we have to do here is we're going to answer a few questions. Um, and basically, there's a little sheet that has like a... Um, it, it looks exactly like a Trivial Pursuit thing, uh, like a mm -hmm. wheel with six parts. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a few questions. What is your favorite thing in the world? And you can mm -hmm. answer as like whatever your character and, or, and you don't have to answer all the questions, but let's say just a couple of questions. So we start having a little bit of a sense of who this character is. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite thing in the world? What is the most important person for you? What do you do on any given day? Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy doing in your free time? What is a guilty pleasure for you? And what descriptors define you best? Uh, there's not, that's not mm -hmm. it. What do others find special about you? What is the most visible thing about your looks? And what is your relationship with the other vessels? It's kind of weird to call them vessels. I suspect, I might, I'm wondering if this is a translation thing, but maybe it's one purpose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or maybe it's just me. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. So do you think well, we could just like, move on ahead, answer a couple of questions and play as ourselves or create a fictional character as you wish. What do you think? Uh, I'm tempted to, to go with like maybe one of the, my, my, my least favorite versions of myself. Interesting. Cool. Which is, which is, which is like me when I'm very anxious and, uh -huh. uh, and yeah, irritable because I, because I think it'd be kind of funny to play and make fun of myself. Okay. Um, yeah. So like, uh, so we can uh, go with descriptors. Some descriptors are anxious and irritable. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How does it's your it, irritation come up then? Show up. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, man, it's just like, I still have my, my grandpa in me. Like really annoyed if I'm late, extremely annoyed if I'm late. Um, and, uh, then, and therefore very focused on just getting on with things and, and not really taking in my surroundings. Um, and still care about the people that I care about. And I still say that like one of the most important things for me in my life, probably the thing that I measure as like my life is good is I have great conversations that matter. Like that's the thing that I'm like, oh yeah, this is a great day. I had like two conversations that I'm going to remember for a long time. That's a very, very good way to measure things. Or at least, I, 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 or at the very least, I relate to it because I have the same kind. That's part yeah. of the reason I do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, great. Well, I, I might go with the same kind of thing and, uh, and say, so some of, the, some of the sides of me, and it's interesting, I, I was like looking and had some new insight in that I'm such a smart ass. Uh, mm. I, am, I, I am a know-it-all, and that is some of the worst, I mean, quote unquote, right? quote unquote, worst parts of me. And I just recently realized like some of the building blocks of like, wow, I was, I was, I know there's a way, cause I, I had that, I, I've done a lot of personal development and coaching courses. Um, part of my base is with a company called Landmark uh, okay. and also meditation and also a few other things, but to, oh, the strengths, Gallup strengths is another thing from the coaching style that mm -hmm. I like as well. But mm -hmm. I was looking at that and I was going, I, I have this way of going about things that, I automatically, before anybody says anything, I know. I know what you're mm -hmm. talking about. I know what you are. And it comes through in my whole way of being, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And uh, so it can come across as complete arrogance, mm -hmm. very, very much so. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I realized was that it was so interesting to see that it is a, one of the, my building blocks that I would usually consider to be more on the negative side. And it's mm -hmm. probably what I've made into my career. Now, it's mm -hmm. not the only thing that I've made into my career, but there is a side of like knowing and being intelligent and something like that, that goes with the territory of being a strategist, I think, or at mm -hmm. least when Absolutely. I was working in agencies, usually, you know, nobody knows really at the beginning of your career, nobody knows exactly what your job is, but people come to you because you seem to know things. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like you, that's one of the things with my bosses, my bosses were like know-it-alls and like they wouldn't let you finish and you know, they already had the answer. And that's definitely a thing that, that I do that. Yeah. I, I try to limit within myself. I did like, a, yeah, I did a, I just cut you off. <laughs> no, no worries. No, it's just, a, yeah. Just no, stay curious fine. for a little bit longer, but that's, I that's did just a, it. Um, over a year long intense course on listening. Right. 
it was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And that was also, I ramped up my meditation time and journaling during that course as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It got to it got to some weird areas that were almost mystical. But in reality, all that was happening is we spent long days and all we were doing was listening. Mm -hmm. One piece, one person speaking at a time and everybody else would listen. And I mean, generally speaking, like on one hand, the contents of the course are confidential and there are confidential stuff. But on another hand, honestly, there's not really anything else that happened. So it's like, I know it had a huge impact on me, on my being, mm -hmm. on everything and who I am and the way that I approach everything. Mm -hmm. But I can just like, it's not particularly confidential to tell you that the course about mm -hmm. listening is all we said, all you did was actually spend a lot of time practicing listening. Practice, man. <laughs> Practice is the thing that changes. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's turned out to be something I increasingly say when I'm working is that I, when I started my career, I really thought strongly and it's funny because I, I seem to have been judged and berated with, I might be wrong about that from in a couple of interviews and meetings with other people professionally, not long ago, that I thought at the beginning, my, my job was to know everything and to show up with the ideas and explain them to people and try to shove them down their throats because I knew. And then the more it went and the more I realized, well, this is a team work and actually I need to listen to people. I need to listen to the clients. I need to, I don't, and it's not that I need to, is that there's a lot more value in me listening and actually knowing like, and saying, actually, if I listen, all the answers and the ideas are going to come out of people mm -hmm. rather than and, come yeah. from me. Um, I, I realized just, just kind of maybe a couple of years before I stopped working in strategy that my job was to create clarity and purpose for teams. And, and when I like, okay, this is my job. Everything else that I am and that I know is a, is our tools for me to do this job you know if so yeah listening to people like is it even like answers that they need like i don't know maybe it, i feel like clarity is the main thing and when people come into work and they're like ah oh, fuck this is exciting i really want to can i curse i'm sorry um oh, <laughs> i mentioned it. it's okay I usually no because i don't have any firm rules about it uh so so yeah like if if people come to work and they're super excited um i feel there's value in that because it's great. People, people have joy coming to work. And I think human joy in itself is, is valuable. Yeah. Uh, but also I really think they, they, they go further. They, they do better work if creativity or, you know, productivity is what we're after. I think joy makes, makes a difference. So yeah, like if, if you understand that the people are more important than the content, I, I think you end up doing this job better. Yeah. I mean, it's like context is decisive, right? Mm. Uh, all right. So let's maybe say one more question, answer one more question to give a little bit of a sense of this uh, dark Marcello and arrogant villain characters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not horrible. And it is about exploring happy moments, even for the evil yeah. sides of ourselves, yes. by the way. Yeah. Um, yes. What do you want to answer another question? Maybe what's your favorite thing as the dark side of you? Or, or just the character that you're creating, whatever it is, could be fixed. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it does tend to intersect that at this, these moments, I'm, I tend to be hungry. Um, and if we're in Italy, I think gelato is probably like my favorite thing. Great. It's uh, appropriate for yeah. the podcast. Name. <laughs> Perfect. And so I'm going to go. Uh, my favorite thing is red wine. Good. Uh, and now we're going to choose a quest for our character, and the quest is a guide for the whole session. Mm -hmm. uh, the main goal is to savor the moment. Uh, and so the quest is like a long-term thing that you want in your life that is not going to be completed, or it's like a it's ah. a mountain with no top type thing, lifelong mm -hmm. aspiration, something positive. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You want I want this to happen. So here are some examples. I could be I want to make the world a better place by how. Uh, mm -hmm. I want my work to be recognized globally. I want to be independent. I want to become a great guitar player, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. I think something around like just, just the very idea of trying to be mindful enough to not be anxious 
like I am in this piece, <laughs> like I some like I sometimes am. Um, yeah. Cool, great. Yeah, uh, more peace of mind. Yes, is that would that be yeah, yeah? more yeah. peace of myself or something along those lines? Less anxious. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. She's like to try to express it in a positive fashion rather than the negative side yes. of things. Yes. Uh, cool. And I'm gonna go. I want. Um, I, I want to produce the best tasting wine in the world. Mm -hmm best tasting right. natural wine in the world. Or I just want to become a winemaker. I don't know. It's just like, that's, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. probably becoming a little bit more fictional right now, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with fictional. All right. So what, that's where I wanted to get to at least the first side of the storytelling, which is called the contemplation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start contemplating and picturing where we are while walking around the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to, describe just and we're making up <clears throat> to describe what is around us as if time slowed down and each mm -hmm. each one of us in turn are going to describe something simple that we perceive with one of our five senses okay yeah mm -hmm. do you want should i start well all right here's here's where we go so i'll start so we're walking on this mountain path and it's a springtime morning mm -hmm. uh and there is a light breeze that is just chilling enough with the sun that is the promise of a hotter day. But right now it feels just like a touch uh, of a cold light breeze on my skin. Mm -hmm. um, or our skins. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are, there are trees around us. Um, there, the, the barks are quite, rough um so they're, they're kind of like re um regenerating from after winter and they're, they're starting to get better cool so is that a site there's a site great uh and how does it feel to look at them regenerate because um, it says for each sense picture the way it feels it doesn't have to be complicated right. just like adding a yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um it feels it feels it feels a bit rough it feels like um if we tripped we you know could get hurt okay cool uh i will go with well i, I guess i'll include our, our destiny our inspiration thing because uh mm -hmm. we've got and i noticed uh, actually i'll leave that one to you because you're more familiar with it. it's your place uh, uh, uh let's go with hearing Uh, we're hearing the sound of crickets. Okay. That is actually just slightly, a slight dissonance with uh, what seems to be otherwise really calm, but it's also kind of interesting and calming at the same time. Or at least it feels like we're completely in nature. What it has me notice is that we're far away from the city enough that I can notice all the sounds of insects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's making me feel... Um, like a bit more part of nature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, keeping that theme, like there's there's something there's something in the air, like the the breeze they describe, like uh, it's the mountain, so there's still like a little bit of snow somewhere, and you can mm -hmm. kind of smell that, and um, and that feels. Yeah, that 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 feels like it's a, a moment of transition. Like, right. so like the, there's more of. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, well, I think I'll add, and that's what I was thinking of earlier: the the smell and presence of the wild chamomile. Mm -hmm. uh, that I was. I don't know. I mean, I think it makes me happy. But I, what do you think? It yeah. makes me kind of calm. But I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, it it smells very much like like regular caramel tea it's just okay cool. it's just it just like you're just immersed in it it just it just feels that feels what good. is it is it yellow orange or what is the color of the flower okay got it so uh, for anybody who's yeah. going to be listening to this they're like yeah. they're yellow bulbs and yes yeah. and marcello has a bunch of them right next to him on his desk so that's awesome. yes it's 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 exactly what you see on the package <laughs> 
<laughs> it's that <laughs> color. It's like very small flowers that kind of look like daisies, but they just kind of like, they kind of rounded up to like a yeah. little, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I think we are, well, I'm satisfied that we, I get a sense of where we are. I think uh, you agree. And uh, then, then what does it say? It says the next phase is exploration. We'll just do a few more minutes of this and I think I'll be happy with it and we can start talking about what we think. Um, when we feel ready, act with your characters and slowly explore your destination. Mm -hmm. In turn, you'll each start describing where your characters are, what they're doing. Okay. We describe where we are. And the idea is as we talk and, as a role-playing game, you know, feel comfortable with either talking about your character at the third person or as yourself in the first person. Either way is fine. You can even mix and match. Uh, for the purpose of the fact that we're sharing this via audio, I'm usually a little bit more careful just like making sure I'm describing if I'm doing first person or third person. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I need feedback from some people to make because this is, you know, I, I'm transitioning properly from doing just full on, the, just traditional interviews uh, two more playful experiences, which I'm super excited about because it's what I what I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. But um, what works best and what is most interesting is still um, an exploration. All right, so um, take your time, let everybody speak. So let's just do a little bit. It's not a contest of who makes the best description. It's about sharing the moment you create. Okay, mm -hmm. um, cool. Well, I guess uh, I'll. Um, I'll go with uh, we're walking in the mountains and uh, as we described it um, and I'll just go well Marcello thank you so much for inviting me for the weekend you know what I really really needed this after after the whole three months of staying stuck in not only my apartment and the city I I, I think I had no idea how how affected I was by being sucked into the city. And you know, this is something that can happen to us when we're, you know, working hard and everything else. But on top of that, we just had to. <laughs> so awesome to be taking the opportunity. And it's, uh, I really, really love the mountains as well. So yeah, thanks for the invite. Ah, Willem. Thanks for coming, man. Cause it's, it, it takes a little bit of courage, right? Um, what times are you hungry? I, always. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'm not hungry, but I can always eat and I'm always happy to eat, to be honest. Good. There's, yeah, there's really good places to eat around here. Uh, and, oh man, I'm already thinking of like, there's this place here, they, they make these panini with uh, like local hams and cheeses and they're, they're really, really good. I'm just worried because like they close at two. Oh, okay. Um, Do we have but, enough time? Is it that back down in the city? I was hoping you... I was like imagining suddenly that you're going to say that there is this place we're walking towards. It has a tiny little cabin like stuck on the mountain. <laughs> yeah. So, so usually, so where I'm trying to, to take us to uh, is, so usually uh, there's the ski lifts uh, are available and then you can get up there with the ski lift, but we're, we're walking from the other side of the mountain and then we're going to get there. So like, um, uh, I, I think we just need to kind of walk a little bit faster. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, sh sure. I mean, it, it, yeah, okay. If you want to, I'll, I'll walk faster. Fine. You, it's your place. You know better. So, yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, I'm sorry, Matt, because it's just, I'm a little bit hungry. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Are you, are you um, mm -hmm. do you recognize this smell? Uh, is this chamomile? Yeah. Like they, Oh it's yeah, usually, I knew that. I yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I, I now you say it, of course, but yes, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it feels like maybe we should like ah, uh, okay. Just, just, just pick some up. Let's just pick some up. Uh, okay, sure. Are we gonna make some like tea infusion herbal teas later? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. My you know wife. Like, I don't think I've ever had a fresh chamomile herbal tea, like not yeah, freshly picked. Yeah. Yeah. It. I don't know if if just because we pick it, we feel like it's different, but um, but I really like when when we do it, uh, it, it just feels like it relaxes me more. Like I think it's yeah. If you go like go really near the the roots of the trees, because like you can you can find they they kind of like almost like a 
like a weed like they 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 grow really close close to the other um the other bushes and yeah get some there cool all right so just not to, to interrupt any creative juices that we're just starting, but just me mindful of time. I think this was an interesting interaction. I'm just going to describe a couple of more things and, and then I want to, well, give us time to be able to talk about it as well. Yeah. Uh, cool. This was really cool. Thank you so much. So the, the last piece to add to a play session was, and we were going towards it anyway, quite naturally, actually, if you notice, was mm. this idea called desires. And the idea is that the characters in Happy Together are gathered. By the way, the game also has instructions to be able to play either on your own, in your head, and mm -hmm. while traveling. So you don't really need any kind of implements or complicated dice or anything. Uh -huh. um, you gather to have a good time and observe, um, observe moments of happiness. And you have a desire. And usually a play session is to fulfill one of the character's desires. So it seems mm -hmm. like quite naturally we're going towards... I'm hungry, let's go have lunch, seems like, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And the desire is something as simple as that. Ideally, mm -hmm. the desire is, can be inscribed in your much bigger quest, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. And then when you're playing with other people, the idea is to, so the sample desires are, you know, it's nothing as more complicated as what we said, find a great place for lunch. <clears throat> uh, and then the idea is through the conversation that we're having that, uh, I, the other characters would use a list of five quali or six qualities to be able to fulfill on the desire uh, through conversation mm -hmm. and through, we would go like, keep going in this conversation. <clears throat> and the qualities are listening, sharing, spontaneity, skill, creativity, and curiosity. And the, mm -hmm. the goal during the conversation is to tick off some of those qualities. And for the person whose desire we're trying to fulfill, to go, oh, you know what? That was really something that I, you ticked one of those desires. What was said was super interesting. And mm -hmm. to observe any moments of, you know, uh, bliss or happiness or just small moments of happiness or notes. And I think, I mean, uh, personally, I also thought we were getting there just talking about fresh chamomile. And I, I stayed quite close to who I am and was like, we didn't go into crazy fiction. But it's true. Mm -hmm. I've never had freshly picked chamomile herbal tea. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, now I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, what do you think how, so how was this whole experience how's this this whole test of a yeah, I, I like gaming? this idea of like a role playing game that is not about combat um, which I hadn't I hadn't, I hadn't had most of the role playing games I play are not about combat those are the ones that I like the most I mean some action <laughs> is worthwhile just like yeah. you know in your whole idea that to have holistic well-being, you need to encompass the body. So having action is really yeah. interesting. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, anyways, in terms of role-playing games, I had, I had never experienced that. Um, and I like, yeah, I just like the idea of, of really trying to practice that and maybe coming from, from versions of you that, that might not be the best. <laughs> like, that, that's where you want to try and remind yourself how to do it. Yeah. And I would say, uh, did you do the, or, or are you into um, Gallup's uh, Strengths Finders? The Strengths, Gallup, do you know that one? No, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> so, you know, Gallup is a big, um, very known for their polls. But actually, funny enough, yeah. uh, if you go into the history, the polls company was failing in the 80s and was purchased and acquired by a positive psychology person. And ah. so they used the infrastructure of the research to create a psych, basically what is this, what, what basically is a psychometric test. Um, right. with the simple idea that I like a lot because it's simple, a positive psychology going, well, actually as humans, we tend to spend a lot of time focusing on, uh, what we're not good at weaknesses or whatever else, and either berating ourselves for it, making ourselves guilty or trying to overcome them. Mm -hmm. What if actually we looked at what our strengths are and cultivating them and working with other people who have complementary ones rather than focusing on things that are not our strengths. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh so you do the whole so they interview they use the market research like a really serious market research infrastructure of the company to be able to go and interview hundreds of thousands of people and right. all together create this system inside of which they, they said well each human being has what we identified as 34 strengths themes that are really mm -hmm. interested interestingly described in the first mm -hmm. place so i think that's one of the one of the values of it and you do this test and it gives you top five or it gives you top 34 in order and it's just a, it's a frame through which to look at things. Um, uh -huh. 
And they're classified, like the 34 are classified in four categories of strength, strategic thinking, relationship building, influencing, and executing. And mm-hmm. um, where I was going with this, on look, I think it's also really interesting to look at sides of you that you don't necessarily like. And I, it, through the lens of positive psychology, very interesting to look at them, not to say, what could I change about that necessarily, but mm-hmm. to look at, hey, this is also a part of who I am and give yourself maybe a bit of a break with it. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what I tend to talk to... It's one to, way to look at it anyway. Yeah. I, I think it's... So there's a few things that I heard uh, around that that I kind of apply uh, with our coachee. So mm. um, one is maybe... Yeah. So it identify sides of you. Accept that there's, there's very facets to who you are but you're not this specific facet and there's no true version of you. Right. And then, uh, so perhaps kind of naming certain facets. So I, I, I kind of, uh, hinted there, like my grandpa, my grandpa was like, if there was, if they had to catch a bus at 12, they, he went to be at the bus station at eight and like, and it was the, the whole, uh, anxiety of that was an ending. So I talk to myself like, ah, Sil like I, I, I know that that's him in my mind. And, and when I can like talk to my grandpa about his anxiety, it's easier than me trying to deal with my own. Is that making sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so when, I, when I name that something that isn't me and then I can talk yeah. to that. It, yeah, it, you it, have a proxy and it's a way to approach it. That's really yeah. interesting. Cool. Uh, and then the, the other thing, um, uh, in terms of, well, it's kind of what we've talked about already, but like, um, one of the beliefs of the dojo is you are what you practice. So like finding ways to, to practice, um, practice out of the things that, that you don't like. And now we, we just got to, we just got to dog. We've got a dog back in October. Uh, and, uh, so I'm trying to, to train him and everything that I'm reading and, and the results I'm getting is when uh, negative reinforcement doesn't work as well as positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement is necessary, but you want them to be doing great and being praised like 90% of the time. Uh, and so, so should we be with ourselves? Um, you know, when, when you tell yourself like, Oh, Oh great. Like you manage to refocus. It's much better than like, come on. You know, why are you thinking about this again? Like yeah. that, bringing that uh, has been very useful for, for my mindfulness practice as well. Yeah. Yeah, one way, another, this, I can't remember where this one comes from, but it's just, I hadn't thought about this for a while, but it's, it's interesting to think about that as in vicious or virtuous, vicious or virtuous circles. So mm. typically if you have a bad experience, you're in a bad mood, you're going to be more likely to give that off to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and vice versa if you have positive reinforcement and you're a good mood you're going to be like sharing and communicating that with other people uh so if you're in a bad mood and communicating that you're like likely to create a vicious circle because the next person along is going to stop so Mm -hmm. i usually take that as my responsibility to that's which is another reason for personal development or whatever you want to call it for growth and understanding listening ability to notice what's going Mm -hmm. on with me so that mm-hmm. the ability, however you develop that, one way is for me is meditation and other courses, mm-hmm. uh, talking, conversation as well, and listening yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. The opportunity to give yourself areas to notice, oh, there's something going on, I was affected by that person, to mm-hmm. go and deal with it so that you're not transmitting that towards a vicious circle that's gonna be creating just like more mess in an mm-hmm. overall like not great environment. And then yes. you're doing negative reinforcement, right? And you're yeah. participating in it. So here I'm going to plug a little bit. Um, so, so one of the things that, that we like about physical practice, uh, maybe you've heard of the hot, cold empathy gap. Tell me um, more. I, I maybe I'm not sure. It's, it's like, everyone knows it. It's just basically like, it's very difficult for you. If you're really calm, it's very, it, it can be difficult for you to predict what you do. If you were, um, the opposite, if you're really angry yes. you know? or, you know, are you really hungry or you really, whatever. Like, um, there's, there's this gap of empathy between you, you, these two versions of you. 
The thing that we like about physical practice is there's many different types of physical practice that can take you very quickly from, I'm absolutely fine to, oh my God, I'm going to die. Um, so like it can be planking, it can be holding your breath, it can be running, you know, th these things take you from here to there very quickly. And as we guide people to do these things mindfully, uh, you know, it might be a breath hold uh, and figuring out where, where you start to feel anxiety rise uh, first and after and how you deal with that anxiety. Like that closes a little bit of that gap because you're going so quickly from one to the next, which usually e either doesn't happen as quickly or it happens quickly enough, but you, you're not trying to be mindful about it. By having physical practice, we, we create this space where like, it's not so high stakes. You know, you can just like drop the plank or you know, uh, take a breath. But by, by getting people to practice these things, uh, they become more familiar. As you said, like they, when anxiety rises, they're like, oh, I remember what this is like. And I have trained myself when I have this trigger, what I'm going to do is not amp it up, it's slowed down. Yeah. Um, and, and that then creates this exactly the, 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 the cycle that you said, because if you see that at work and then there's a, there's a really heightened situation and then someone is just not responding to that and going, Oh, here's what I'm noticing. There's someone there in that room that's going to go, Oh, is that the way that we do things here? That seems healthier than the examples that I've had. And that's kind of the, the effect that, that, that we want to have. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I'm mindful of time, so I, and I think we could keep going and talk and really enjoy ourselves for a while. But I want to add one more thing, and then we're going to, add, we're going to wrap up with uh, the end questions that I distill the ice cream for everyone podcast. So I'll call them the cool down questions. Um, hmm. And that is that So I, I did a whole course on body language, and I learned so much. Like I had huge amounts of breakthroughs with my own body that are very similar to what you teach, and I think it'd be interesting doing some stuff with you maybe we'll see but mm -hmm. when you mentioned rock climbing earlier mm -hmm. my thought was immediately oh that is not something that i do and one thing mm -hmm. that i got out of that course when i tried a bunch of stuff that was my immediate thought was like oh that's not me mm -hmm. i learned so much by trying a lot of those things and that's how i got back into skiing and I absolutely love it mm -hmm. and it's the first time in my life for the last few years that a physical activity became the most important thing in my life Mm. particularly an expensive and time-consuming physical activity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now that you mentioned it and I noticed, oh, that's not for me, I was like, you know what? I think I should probably try rock climbing. And at mm -hmm. the very least, I'm definitely sure to be learning a lot of stuff, even if I don't, you know, if I don't do it on a regular basis, but certainly mm -hmm. trying with you. So I'll put that down on my list for sure. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So let's go with the questions uh, because otherwise, as I said, we could keep talking for a while. So, mm -hmm. well, the first and easiest one, uh, talking gelato, do you have a favorite flavor? Oh, pistachio. Pistachio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic easy, one. I love easy. it. It's the measure of like, is, is this place good? Can I try a pistachio? Okay, we can have a gelato here. That's good. Yeah. Love it. Um, is there, so we talked about games. Do you play games regularly? Is there a game you particularly like playing, whether it's video or otherwise? I don't know if you still play games or? Uh, uh, I say so still because you mentioned like Dungeons and Dragons from back in the day, but. No, so board games I haven't played in a long time. Um, video games every day. Um, right now, Hearthstone's been the thing that I've played for the last maybe five years. Familiar with that? I know of it, and I used yeah. to play Magic, and I have a couple of friends that play friends that play Hearthstone. I've never not played it. I yeah. dropped down a lot on video games. I, uh, mm -hmm. I do have a Nintendo Switch and uh -huh. a few games on Steam, and I tend to be particularly interested in. I mean, I follow the news on some AAA titles to know what's going on, but I particularly am interested in small, weird indie games. Ah, oh, dude. Um, let me find... There's a Steam one that they might like, and I always forget the name, but I'll find it. Uh, and then I'm playing Assassin's Creed um, Origins because it was on sale, and then I decided to buy it, um, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, <laughs> I've and not played I have any of the series. I'm sure I would enjoy them. Maybe yeah. someday we'll see. Yeah, actually, they they really they messed up with the Paris one, so I kind of stopped oh. playing for a few years, and I kind of went back with this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's a last piece of art or media that do you particularly that had an impact on you? So I say media to be wide. It could be a piece of art. It could be a TV show. It could be a book. 
mm. movie. I think that the last one that, that I remember being being taken aback by um, this French film called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Okay. Yeah, I think it's from 2020. It's right. great. What is it yeah. about? Uh, it's about. Uh, I, I think, I think the name it's, yeah, about century. This it's about a lady painting a portrait of another lady to be sent to uh, a rich Milanese man so they may get married. All right, cool. I'm not spoiling the plot much if I say that. Yeah. All right, so definitely worth checking out. Yeah. Awesome. And what do you think something, is something that everyone should experience at least once? Oh, um, being a foreigner. I, um, I mean, I'm biased, but I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. As yeah. Having lived and traveled in multiple places and being just international to begin with. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't pinpointed, are you, where are oh, you yeah. from? <laughs> I didn't mention yeah. that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, people know me uh, on, on my show. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. Not necessarily the case, because of course, people will know you and come and check out the show. So I uh, obviously have a very Dutch name that's like right now on the yeah. Zoom thing. Uh, my father is from Rotterdam. I was born in Long Island, New York, and I moved uh-huh. to France when I was six years old. So I'm bilingual French and English. Right. Uh, and on my mom's side, uh, they're Spanish. So my grandparents mm-hmm. fled after the Spanish Civil War and were in refugee camps in the south of France. And so my mom grew up in France. And so mm-hmm. I, funnily enough, have a dual French and American citizenship, but technically from yeah. Dutch and Spanish blood. Uh, <laughs> and I grew up in France around Paris, and then I lived in London for a long time. I went and traveled around Asia and Southeast Asia and China for a couple of years, lived in Singapore mm-hmm. for a couple of years traveled again and then the last few years in Chicago and I came back to Paris last year. Uh-huh. Right. So yeah. You you're probably a bit broken uh like me like not no is really where you're from. Like yes. it's just everything now just feels like it's not quite yeah. It's a conversation that happens a lot with my siblings and my older brother in particular because we have there's age gaps between there's four of us and there's age gaps between so we have different stories because my parents were at different spots of their lives and as well Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. and he talks a lot about like not having roots and where our roots Mm -hmm. i think i've kind of like a lot accepted a lot more that you know what that i'm just i am i am an expat uh Mm -hmm. I, i now have traveled enough that I find myself more kin to people who have traveled a lot and don't really have any roots. Uh, yeah. And at the same time, I've chosen to be more French. Well, I've chosen to move back to Paris because I feel in some sense that I'm more French than any of the other things that I am. But mm-hmm. I'm also not particularly French at all. Uh-huh. The weird thing is that when, when I moved to France, I couldn't really speak French. So the kids teased me at school, but I don't really remember mm-hmm. that. People told me. But mm-hmm. I do know that people spoke to me and related to me as an American. Oh, you're an American. Uh, uh-huh until I moved to London when people were like, oh, you're French. And so I suddenly became French when yeah. I moved to London. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I totally get that. And the, I get the, the, the smaller thing with that because like, I don't particularly strike, pe- strike people as Brazilian at first. Um, and I actually really like that. I always said that I wish I had like a Jamaican accent speaking English. And like, re- just really mess with people's minds. It just really mess with the uh, the expectations. Um, but at the same time, that like, I I also feel in a lot of ways I feel quite Italian um, from you know the the background in Brazil um, and so just you what, have some, uh, back. So you have a, some Italian heritage from your parents, grandparents, parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from my mum's side, um, it's kind of equal parts. Genetically, it's kind of equal parts of uh, German and, and Italian, uh, but in terms of but culturally, like the understanding of what a Sunday should be like, uh, how close you should get to people, how much you move your hands when you talk, uh, like all of that um, is, is quite Italian. And in a lot of ways, I, I, feel, I feel like I, um, I'm, I'm more Italian than I am British, for sure, which, and I hold a British passport. Um, but, um, but ne- no place like is really my place now. I, I never, never feel like that is the thing. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, this is where I'm from. You know? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so where can people find you? Obviously there's, is it the dojo.team for the website? Is exactly. that correct? Yeah. The dojo.team for the website. 
Um, and yeah, from there you, you can find other stuff. You can look me up on LinkedIn. You can look me up on, um, uh, on Sweathead. You know, I'm, I, I post on those things quite a lot and, um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. Fine. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. This was a great conversation, Marcello. Thank you, William. <laughs> All right, that's another episode wrapped up. Another episode that is at the same time in full audio and video for people preferring the podcast version or people preferring the video version with those semi, I mean, I don't know. I feel the kind of awkward intro and outro video bits, uh, but they're also audio bits if you're only listening to this. And like the only added value is a few logos and my face if you're looking at the actual video. But I really appreciate you listening to this point. As I said at the beginning, if you're looking for anything to do with Ice Cream for Everyone, you can find it all at www.icecreamforeveryone.net. I've just recorded a few more episodes and some people, well, somebody, one person reminded me that I'm late with the Iron Sworn episodes that I've been editing. So I still have one more to edit that is super late that I've had it in the box for months. Uh, it just takes a while. Uh, and uh, you can also watch the Playful Strategy weekly videos that are a lot shorter that are coming out. I thought I needed something a little bit short because while well, bite size is some of the name of the game, I prefer long form content or mid form content, usually around an hour. Um, but those bite size allow you to get into it and allow me to share a lot more things of the, all the various books I've been reading about play over the years. So that's about it for now. Yeah, uh, watch out for another episode coming out soon. Thank you very much for watching or for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye.